Today's video is going to be on uh, boring. Um, I mentioned in a previous video um, that I might do one on this, uh, and in particular I mentioned that I, I had a real disdain for import boring stuff. And hopefully this video explains why uh, they are as bad as they are. And it's not really a case of, um, of import quality tooling not being as good as American made. It's a case of it being so bad it will actually end up wrecking parts. Um, okay. So I guess the uh, first thing to look at is, is why do we uh, do boring, um, especially if we're using CNC machines? Um, well, boring has uh, three advantages, really. The first one is being able to make a hole of a specific size when either a drill bit or a reamer doesn't exist for it, so um, just for optimal sizes. Uh, the second one is perpendicularity. Um, a boring head is, is able to make a hole uh, through a piece of uh, material exactly perpendicular to the, the surface or, or at least parallel to its own uh, axis of rotation. Um, sure, you can use a spot drill and a stub length drill bit to, to poke a hole in some material, but uh, unless the grind on the drill bit is perfect, it will begin to wander off course and you'll end up with a hole that isn't quite perfectly perpendicular to the uh, surface of the work. And, and even if you follow up um, with a reamer, You'll still um, it'll still track the original hole that was, was made, and it won't be um, uh, perpendicular. The third reason is uh, something called circularity, or, or how round the hole is. Um, now, to be honest, in most cases, it, it's not really a problem. Um, we're not actually that bothered of uh, how round the hole is, um, except for some special cases. Um, one of the most common ones of those is, is creating a bearing pocket for a radial thrust bearing or perhaps doing some external boring to cut a stub axle on the outside of a workpiece. The reason that uh, basic interpolation doesn't work properly uh, or isn't accurate enough um, for these special cases um, uh, is, the co is the coordination between uh, multiple axes. Um, if we look here at this, this diagram I printed out uh, that I found online, this is actually a non roundness test from um, a range of uh, bull bar. Um, it, the most uh, immediate thing are these small steps uh, where it crosses the axes, and this is due to backlash in the system. Um, obviously, when you're changing direction of a particular axis, there's, um, there's uh, lost movement. Um, another thing you can see is this first quadrant up here. Um, it starts off to the right-hand side of the uh, of the uh, of the ideal position, and as it tracks up here, it actually stops short of where it should be. Um, and if you think about what it's trying to do, it, it's trying to um, control the position of the uh, cutter absolutely precisely. Um, and when it's here, it's obviously nearly all the motion at this point is in the y-axis, um, and then as it moves up here, it, it it peters out and there's virtually no movement in Y up here and the reverse is true for X. So the CNC system is attempting to continuously uh, change the speed of two axes um, and therefore precisely control um, the acceleration or deceleration of two axes to try and maintain the exact position of the cutter. This is actually a fairly difficult thing for a CNC system to do, and it makes it even more difficult uh, on, on a machine like the Tormark that has uh, open loop control. Um, so this is a stylized version of, of the hole you end up with. It's a bit exaggerated, but this gives you an idea of what's going on. Um, now, the difference uh, is when you bore, the, how good or how circular the hole is is only dictated by how good the bearings in the spindle are. I've shown some of this stuff in uh, one of my previous videos, but we'll go over it again uh, and show you, uh, show you what uh, boring stuff I bought for the jobs I need to do. Um, obviously the boring head here is a uh, Criterion 202B. Um, I mentioned that uh, if you're patient on eBay, you can get a pretty good deal on one. So this is a two inch boring head. Um, I bought a single boring bar. Um, this is a Criterion uh, TA437. So after the uh, indexable carbides inserted in there, um, it's uh, 437 thou between the tip of the um, insert and this back edge. So that's the minimum size hole that I can bore is, is 437 thou. Um, and then that'll take me all the way up to about uh, two inch uh, bore. If I want to go larger than that, 
Um, well, I, I found this uh, uh, neat boring head attachment uh, through eBay. Um, the company's name is Mesa Tool. It's quite a neat little design. Um, if I flip it over, you can see, again, this uh, indexable carbide in there. Uh, if I install it in the boring head uh, like this, uh, I'll be able to uh, bore holes from about two inches up to maybe three inches. Um, I can then flip it around and install it in the boring head this way around and, and go up to holes about four inches in diameter. Um, if I want to go any bigger than that, I'm kind of reaching uh, the limit of the horsepower available on the Tormod. But uh, if, I, if I take small bites, it's possible to go bigger. And in that case, um, I can use a cross hole bar. When making holes uh, smaller than perhaps half inch, uh, to be honest, you're probably okay with um, just spot drilling, uh, then using stub length drill and then finishing off with a ream up if you need a, a very circular and, and accurate hole. Um, uh, there are reamers available in nearly every size up to half inch and they're not uh, too expensive. Um, so that's the way I would recommend uh, most people go. Um, however, having said that, while I was looking for my uh, larger Criterion uh, boring head to come up on eBay, I did come across this uh, smaller one by Criterion it's called the Tiny Mite, um, and there's no way I would buy one of these retail, they're just way too much money. Uh, but it's kind of a, a neat little uh, boring head for doing smaller stuff. Um, uh, if we have a quick look at it, it's basically um, uh, three quarters of an inch across here. Um, obviously you've got the um, adjustment screw on the side, you've got uh, uh, the lock uh, set screws on the side. So it's just a miniature a boring head. Um, I've got a 50 thousandths uh, boring bar in there at the moment, so this will take me from, as I say, 50 thousandths up to, up to half an inch. Um, you know, if I, if I line that up with a quarter here, you can see, uh, you get some sort of idea of the scale of this. This is uh, really, really good for some of the smaller stuff I need to do. If we take a closer look at the boring head itself, um, Here's some things to look out for, uh, but to be honest, the import boring heads themselves uh, aren't too bad and you can probably get away with using one. Just a couple of things to look for. Uh, first is the diameter of these set screws. Um, very often you'll find import boring heads that have uh, really, really small diameter set screws that are, are no good at all. Um, the other thing about the import ones is uh, inside the head itself, where this adjustment screw is, there's kind of like a uh, it's like a, a, a two flanges machined on and there's a little lug that hangs down from this uh, this, sl this cross slide that sits in between the two so as you turn both directions that's what actually pulls the uh, slide uh, back and forth. You'll find that the import ones uh, use fairly soft material and they don't finish uh, the, two fl the, the inside of these two flanges um, particularly well so very very quickly you'll get um, uh, quite a bit of binding occurring and it's very difficult to make uh, small adjustments but uh, yeah decent American uh, American made one you don't get problems like that. Uh, the other thing to look for on the set screws themselves is most of the time the import boring uh, heads will come with set screws um, that have a flat base on them um, and the corresponding import boring bars are perfectly round just like these. So even the best case scenario of a uh, set screw uh, with a flat surface actually hitting uh, the boring bar and trying to clamp it uh, means that you've got a, a single single line contact. And in most cases, that's not going to be what happened. This, the, the set screw is going to come in at a very slight angle and you'll get a single point contact and you haven't got a cat's chance in hell of actually holding the boring bar correctly. Um, the other thing about the, um, the set screws on, on the import boring heads is uh, they're made of Swiss cheese. Um, the hole's not deep enough, so even if you try and snug this up tightly, uh, that hexagonal hole turns into a circular one very, very quickly. But um, that's not such a bad thing that you can't tighten up that, 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 uh, that hard, because if you do tighten up the set screw uh, a little bit too hard on the cheap import boring bars, you'll just end up putting a massive dent in the side. And when that's installed in this uh, a perfect size hole in the head, you'll never get the boring bar out again. So, uh, yeah, 
it's a double-edged sword really but I suggest if you if you use an import boring head just uh, get rid of the three bits of G's that come in it and put some uh, decent uh, uh, quality um, cut point set screws um, uh, they're going to be metric probably uh, you go to Ace Hardware and get uh, get some replacement uh, set screws okay a quick look at the uh, boring bar uh, that I got um, if you look end on you'll see it's basically circular with four flats machined onto it um, this way it will locate correctly inside the boring head on the round sections and uh, provide a nice flat surface to clamp down with some cut point set screws um, as I men just mentioned before the import uh, uh, boring bars uh, don't have flats on them uh, they're perfectly um, cylindrical now the theory uh, behind having a perfectly cylindrical uh, boring bar is so you can actually adjust it slightly and change the rake angle um, or the angle at which the uh, uh, cutting surface uh, makes with the interior of the bore. Now if you know enough about boring to be able to uh, uh, figure out how to change the rake angle you're going to know that you don't buy crap you buy decent uh, decent boring stuff anyway so it's it's really neither here nor there. Uh, boring bars that have flats pre-ground onto them um, actually set this at almost a neutral rake angle. It's, it's very close to uh, 90 degrees and in most cases uh, that rake angle will work absolutely fine on all the materials you'll, uh, you'll want to bore. Um, so I strongly recommend that you buy one decent boring bar um, with flats on them and that way they will be gripped properly in the boring head. Okay. okay um, if we're looking at uh, a boring head here, uh, we're actually looking at it from the perspective of a workpiece. Um, it's got a boring bar installed and uh, obviously it's rotating as we see here in a uh, counterclockwise direction. Um, all right. What can happen is it can start to uh, resonate or squeal and uh, this is caused by uh, the right combination of things and, and effectively it's the uh, type of cutter you're using, the rake angle you're using on it, the surface speed which is governed by the diameter of the bore and the RPM. Um, and there's a, several other things also, the hardness of the material you're boring, um, which can contribute to it. Um, and basically what's happening is it's a vibration uh, along the length of the boring bar itself. And this causes the, um, the boring bar to dig into or flex away from the interior of the bore. Um, it, it doesn't have to be the base frequency of that bar. It can be a harmonic uh, of, uh, of that particular bar. But... Um, very often when you're boring a hole, um, these parameters are, are usually pretty close to, to one of the natural frequencies of resonance. I mean, it only takes a small amount to change it. Uh, now, whether that's just making a small adjustment on the effective diameter will kick off this resonance or squeal on the boring bar. Or um, there's another one that's quite common, and that's uh, when you're boring a through hole. You get almost all the way through the part and then you hit some slightly harder material that's work hardened uh, from a previous machining operation on the back side and again this, this resonance kicks off. Um, okay now uh, so, so how does that uh, how does that affect the, the, the ball? Well see here in the diagram I've got a red arrow indicating the direction of uh, rotation uh, well Sir Isaac tells us that um, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction and that's indicated by the second red arrow here and that's uh, forming a resistance to rotation to uh, the, the boring surface itself. Now, in the case of the Tormach, um, uh, it has a horse, horse and half spindle, so it won't affect the spindle at all. It won't affect the RA collet system either, um, nor will it uh, affect the TTS um, tool holding system. Uh, what it does do is um, especially on boring bars that are cylindrical and don't have a flat to clamp it on. We've already looked at uh, this sort of single point retention mechanism with the um, set screw. Uh, what will happen is the actual boring bar will begin to rotate inside the boring head. You've got this, this uh, vibration traveling up and down the boring bar and it can in some cases get very bad um, and it just causes that set screw to give way and causes the boring bar to rotate. The first lot of boring bars here are actually set, made by Criterion. Uh, you can see the smaller three bars um, 
have uh, solid carbide shanks and tips that are then brazed into uh, high speed steel cylinders. Uh, the larger ones have high speed steel down to the end and small uh, carbide inserts brazed onto the end of them. Um, it's not a big deal, but you'll also see uh, on each of the cylinders there's uh, at least two flats ground on there which will aid in location and retention of the uh, boring bars within the boring head. But the main thing to be aware of here uh, is the actual geometry of the end of these bars and we'll look at it, uh, a little diagram that I draw of what the end of these look like. Okay. okay we're now looking at a small diagram I drew uh, at the end of a boring bar and this happens to be a, a decent quality one. And you can say that, see the key point here is the geometry of the cutting surface in relation to the centre of the boring bar itself. Uh, it is dead, dead on the centre and this will become pretty important later on. Um, let's have a look at uh, some cheaper boring bars. Now here's a good example of the uh, kind of boring bars that I really hate. The first indicator is they're uh, presented to you on a, a beautiful block of wood. Um, the second you can't see in the photo but uh, there'll be no flats on those um, this, uh, metal cylinders at the bottom uh, so no way to reference them within the boring head. Um, the, th the third thing to notice is the shanks themselves are significantly uh, larger in diameter than a decent set of uh, boring bars. And, and this is because the material they're made from uh, has such a poor um, uh, tensile modulus that uh, you need that, that basically they need to add more material to them so they don't behave like a wet noodle. Um, and this has a knock-on effect on the geometry of the raised carbide inserts that, that are on the end of them. And I use the, the, the word uh, carbide very, very loosely because you so much to show one of these to, to a piece of small steel, you watch how quick the edge disappears off of it. Um, anyway, so we'll have a look, quick look now how that impacts the geometry of that cutting surface. So here's the end on view from one of these import boring bars uh, and you can see that the cutting surface is significantly higher. Um, or offset from the uh, centre of the boring bar. Um, and we'll uh, have a look now why this causes such an issue. Okay, this first situation we're using the uh, uh, decent boring bar good geometry and you can see uh, it's set up with a neutral rake angle and it's quite happily uh, cutting that bore there which is indicated by the green line. Um, as I say we hit this resonance situation um, squeal and the boring bar begins to rotate in the boring head itself. Okay, so the boring bar uh, gives way and ends up rotating maybe only five degrees. Um, that's enough uh, to back the boring bar away from the inside of the bore. Uh, so uh, no harm done really. Um, you just have to reset the boring bar and, and, and redo the bore. No damage is done. Um, and also this uh, feedback mechanism of uh, chatter is self-correcting. Um, resonance occurs and the boring bar begins to move um, because the set screw gives way and it, as I say it backs away and it corrects itself uh, with no issues. Okay, now we'll uh, look at what happens with one of these uh, cheap bars. Um, again it's set it back up in the boring head uh, with neutral rake so it hits the interior of the board at 90 degrees. Um, when the resonance begins or squeal begins to happen, um, the set screw gives away again, the bar rotates, but this time it's a positive feedback mechanism. So the boring bar digs deeper into the workpiece. And again, this causes even more squeal and chatter, which rotates the bar even more, digging further in and further in. Um, and yeah, uh, it's just because of the uh, bad layout of the geometry and this will continue to happen and the squeal will get worse and worse until you reach a point where it rotates enough to begin to back away from the uh, interior of the bore again. Okay so this is uh, where the boring bar ends up uh, after the uh, resonance and squeal settle down. Um, you can see that it's now uh, tracing out uh, a slightly larger bore it's indicated by the uh, red line here. But either way, it is larger than the uh, bore that you intended to make. And as I say, if it was the final pass, um, yeah, you're in a bad situation because if you're running a CNC machine, uh, the code will then uh, begin to withdraw the uh, boring head and you'll overbore and wreck the part. 
Um, if you're using a manual uh, mill, then uh, the down feed will have disengaged, and again, you'll withdraw the boring head manually using the quill, and you'll just single point a uh, fairly interesting variable helix fed all the way up the inside of your nice smooth bore, and again, wreck the part. Um, so yeah, that's that's why these uh, bad geometry uh, boring bars uh, just end up wrecking parts. Um, and I've uh, I've done it many many times in my life, uh, and I really want to save people the hassle of uh, going through this aggro. Um, and the best way to do that is just avoid these cheap boring bars. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, here we are again at these uh, uh, bits of junk. Um, if you look carefully. At these, you'll see that the shanks have been actually been turned off center from the uh, metal cylinder at the uh, base of the boring bar. I, I'm not sure why they've decided decided to do this. It's not consistent between bars. Um, perhaps it's some some sort of clearance idea, or maybe it's to try and uh, mitigate this uh, offset problem of the cutting surface in relation to the center of the boring bar. I don't know, but just take uh, the example of the left hand one uh, at the front there. You can see that uh, the closest point the um, shank is to the uh, large cylinder it is in the same orientation as the front of the um, uh, insert as well. So that's just made this problem five times worse. It, the whole situation is laughable. Okay, so I guess it comes down to a choice of uh, these two uh, for what you buy for your boring bar. Uh, option one, you can buy uh, this uh, large array of imported Chinese ferritic cheese uh, presented on a beautiful off-cut of 2x4 uh, and it, 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 I can always guarantee you that these will royally fuck your parts up at some point in the future um, but the plus side is you do get nine of them so if you want to bore a two inch hole through a piece of one inch uh, 1018 uh, you've got half a chance of making it all the way through uh, if you use all nine uh, in succession okay I mentioned earlier that it's a pretty rare requirement to actually use a boring head with a CNC system. Um, but of those rare uh, occasions when you do need to uh, get good circularity, then um, a simple, one simple boring bar will cover 90% of uh, all of those rare occasions anyway. Um, here's a, a, an option I found again on Messitool's website, but uh, there are many other uh, websites and manufacturers out there that uh, sell some of the things. It's a three inch long boring bar, half inch diameter. It's got uh, two flats ground onto it and so when you sump that up in the boring head it will hold the correct uh, rake angle on that uh, insert. It's uh, a um, indexable insert so you can rotate it uh, three times and then just throw it away and put a replacement one in here. Uh, and the nice thing is it's made from uh, proper material, uh, in this case a heat treated tool steel. Um, it's made here in the United States, it keeps a fellow American machinist in, in work. Um, and the nice thing is it's uh, three bucks less than that Chinese crap. Um, yeah, I, I think the choice is fairly uh, obvious on this one. So to summarize, um, when a boring operation uh, goes correctly, uh, you'll have a reasonable sized chip being produced on the way down into the bore and then on the uh, way back out again you'll have a very very fine chip or uh, it might even look like a thread or a, or a hair or a very fine filament uh, on the way back out again this is because it's a, it's a small spring pass and it's just taking out a flex in the boring bar um, when the boring operation uh, goes wrong and uh, you have this failure that I've just described uh, the symptoms are you'll um, uh, the, you'll begin the boring cycle, you'll produce a certain size chip, you'll hit a bad resonance or squeal that will get much, much worse, and then it'll settle down quite, quite now. And when you begin to withdraw the, um, the boring head, you'll see the chip produced is as big, if not bigger, than the chip produced on the way in. Okay, now the final thing I'll do is I'm going to put a link to a uh, another YouTube movie which perfectly demonstrates this. Um, it, it's not a rare occurrence. Uh, this cheap boring stuff will, will have this problem and it's uh, quite often it rears its head. Uh, but before I put that link up, I just want to say a couple of things. It's another Tormach user. Um, it is uh, Artisan Dice. If you don't know who they are, I suggest you go and check out their website. I'll put a link in the description and have a look around their YouTube channel. Uh, what they make are small pieces of art. 
um, really, really beautiful workmanship. Um, there's a really neat uh, video on the YouTube channel on flame anodizing that I uh, suggest uh, you check out. But as I say, um, I'm in no way uh, criticizing uh, the guys over at Artisan Dice. Uh, unfortunately, they just used uh, junk tools to uh, uh, attempt to bore a hole. Um, the slight, uh, maybe uh, some slight criticism might be they were a little bit over optimistic with the um, size of a drill bit they were hoping to use at the tool mock. But honestly, uh, any anybody who's able to uh, accurately and consistently cut a uh, 20 sided die from materials ranging from stone through to copper through to solid tungsten uh, definitely gets my full respect uh, uh, from a machine perspective. Okay, uh, here it is.